Welcome to the Author Alchemist Podcast. I'm here to make your writing magic happen. I'm going to teach you how to use your superpowers to ignite, inspire, and encourage your creativity so that you can turn lead into gold. Join me, Kimba York, as I delve into the many mysteries of inspiration, motivation, and imagination. Welcome to the sixth episode of the Author Alchemist podcast. I have recorded five whole episodes by now, this being the sixth, so I think my math is right. Well, anyway, this is the sixth. I've made it. I'm really impressed with myself. You're probably not as impressed with me as I am, but as I mentioned in one of the earlier podcasts, this is a little bit outside of my comfort zone. Writing I got you back, kid. I got you. I can write whatever you need me to write, however you need me to write it, and however fast you need me to write it. But talking about writing and recording myself and the cruelest cut of all, having to listen to the recordings that I make is very weird for me. So I, for one, am proud that I've made it to the sixth podcast, and I'm looking forward to doing this a lot more. I have some great ideas coming up. It's interesting honestly, that I kind of off the cuff started off this podcast talking about the podcasts I've already recorded, because the theme of this week's alchemical lesson is that regret is not inspiration. Yes, yes, this episode is all about letting go of the past. And I know there are about 200,000 podcasts out there telling you how to uh, be at peace with your past and learn to accept what has happened and what is and live in the present moment and make yourself a better person. And yeah, I'm not about that shit. I'm talking about writing. I'm talking about letting go of the past as a writer. It would be easy to shuffle this off into letting go of past Drafts of your writing, uh, kill your darlings, yada, yada, yada. Don't cling to what you've written. Always keep writing more. Don't be afraid to edit. And that's all true. And I'm sure I'll have a podcast about that. In fact, that's a really good idea. I'm going to have a whole podcast about kill your darlings. But that's not this podcast. This podcast is about how to let go of your past as a writer which is where I get the idea that regret is not inspiration. This was born out of my own experiences as a writer, or I should say this was born out of my experiences as a not writer. I can't say there was any really long stretch of time where I didn't write at all at this stage of my life, or actually from the time I was a young girl, writing has almost been a compulsion for me. And I've found that when I'm not writing fiction stories, I tend to write things like blog posts or just handwritten journal entries or uh, op-ed letters. It's very hard for me just to not put words down. It's a comfort zone for me. So that's where I go when I want to communicate. In fact, I think that's why I started a live journal way back in 2004. I just love the idea of being able to share my thoughts and feelings with my friends and, and wow, look at this new platform to do it on. Anyway, point being, despite my efforts to keep writing in some way, shape or form, I wasn't writing the way I wanted to write. I wasn't writing stories that I wanted to write I wasn't writing the types of characters that I loved, and I wasn't writing in a way that would result in completed, finished stories. I would sometimes get a bee in my bonnet and crash out 10,000, 20,000 words of an idea that really intrigued me or I thought was cute or that I thought had legs, and then I would become very self-defeating and say, well, you know, you've never you never really finished anything before. Why are you going to finish this now? And who's going to read it anyway? And wow, this there's no market for this. But it was a vicious cycle because I kept getting angry about the fact that I wasn't writing what I wanted to write. I would go to my day job, whether I had a crappy job or a good job, didn't matter. And I had both through the years. It's been an adventure, let me tell you. 
I would be angry about the fact that my job wasn't writing, that I wasn't telling the stories I wanted to tell. And in a vicious circle, a vicious cycle, the anger kept me from writing. There are people out there who say that anger and spite motivate them. And I really admire them because that is not the case for me. (laughs) Anger and spite shuts me down hard. Whether I'm angry at a specific person or a specific situation or at myself, I don't get charged up by that at all. Not in the least little bit. And so the cycle kept repeating itself of me not writing, me getting angry about not writing, Maybe trying to write a little bit, but writing because I was angry, not because I was inspired, and then stopping writing, uh, you know, the demons in my head would defeat me and it all start over again. What I learned from those experiences is that regret and anger, pick your poison, those are sinkholes. Now, see, I live in Florida, so sinkhole is a really visual real life metaphor for me. As a teenager, I lived down the road from a house that was built over a sinkhole. I've watched sinkholes happen. They're scary mofos. Oh my God. Sinkholes are just terrifying. Um, They are when the ground collapses into an underground cavern. And anything that is on that ground goes down. If you're very lucky and you're near that collapse or on the edge of it, you manage to get out alive. But that's not always the case. Uh, Unfortunately, it's very true. Some people have actually died when sinkholes happened out of nowhere here in Florida. So for me, that, um, is it thunder? And and you can tell I'm in Florida. I don't know if you can hear the thunder, but it's totally thundering right now. Wow, perfect timing, nature. Thank you for the special effects. Back to the point. Anger and regret are sinkholes. They will take you down and they will not give you any way to get back up. You're going to have to spelunk your way out of them every single time. And that, my friend, is exhausting. So what will inspire you? I've experienced a lot of tragedy in my life, and I have suffered or continue to suffer. I'm not really sure where I am on that spectrum. Things like PTSD and clinical anxiety to a crippling point. So I know there's no wishing away the problems that we face that affect us deeply and intimately. If you didn't write because you were in a bad relationship, you can't go back and make that experience have never happened. And you can't make your feelings about it just go away. But what you can do is be kind to yourself. Forgive yourself for things that were mistakes or bad judgments on your part. Be kind to yourself about situations that you didn't have control over, but you found yourself in, and allow yourself to heal from that. Holding on to the anger you feel about the stories you haven't written, just as with any other aspect of your life, will sink you down into that sinkhole of misery and regret and will not result in more stories. It will certainly not result in better stories. Remember that the theme of my creativity coaching is write what you love to read. And to do that, you have to love what you're writing. Because how are you going to write what you love to read if you don't love what you're writing? And you can't do that if you're mired in the anger and the frustration of the past. I am very wary of the word hope. To me, it's too closely aligned to wishful thinking. I prefer the word intention. So one way you might focus on creating new opportunities and new stories rather than focusing on the missed opportunities of stories you never wrote is to think of your intentions to write and what you intend to create and how you'll make that happen. There is a school of thought that says everything happened the way it was supposed to happen, and it meant to happen that way. I'm going to go against the grain a little bit. While I understand that a lot of people gain spiritual peace and a sense of comfort from that thought, 
To me, that's pretty much meaningless. The past is the past, whether it meant to happen that way or not. Certainly, sorry, you're never going to convince me that the deaths of my parents was meant to happen. That they died so I could be a better person. I know that's a little deep and heavy to talk about in a podcast like this, but I want to tell you that sometimes it's okay to believe that shit happens and there was no reason for it. But either way, whether you feel that it happened for a reason or whether you feel that it was just cruel and unjust twist of fate of the universe, you're going to have to let it go and you're going to have to create your own meaning out of it. This is how stories happen. We're writers. We are masters of the creative art of creating reality. The books that we write, the stories that we write, immerse people in a reality that's different than the one they live every day. We're good at this. You're good at this. You are good at creating a story that is enriching and empowering and inspiring. So do that for yourself. Take what's happened in your past and the regrets you have about the stories you haven't written and the books you haven't sold and all the ways that you haven't lived up to your intentions yet and craft a story for yourself that gives you the power to write what you want to write and write what you love to read. I came to a lot of this through fan fiction, writing in a comfort zone where I was supported and encouraged by other female writers and was able to get enough stories out there to realize that writing could only happen from a place of inspiration and a desire to share the stories that I'm writing as opposed to regret and self-recrimination and bitterness. In short, the solution is to start writing, my friends. Once you start writing, you will realize that the past is the past, and you will create the intention for yourself to keep writing more and more and more until one day you just can't imagine that there was ever a time that you were mad or upset because you haven't written. So just remember, regret is not inspiration. Always follow through on your dreams. Create the intention to write the stories you love to read. So thanks for following along for the sixth episode and the dramatic thunder background that is Florida. My dog slept through the whole thing. I don't know whether my podcast bore her or she just doesn't care. I don't know. But neither me yakking away in this microphone nor the thunder outside bothered her one little bit and I'm very jealous about that because she's napping and I'm working but here we are I appreciate you listening along and when you get a chance drop by my website if you haven't yet sign up for the bulletproof writer free email course it is designed to help writers get off their duffs and start writing and creating stories and live as a writer in their own lives. I love it. I think it's really helpful. I hope it is for you too. I'd love to get your feedback on it. So please definitely stop by my website and sign up for that. Remember, it's free. So thank you for following along and I will talk to you next week. Thank you for listening to the Author Alchemist podcast. I'm Kim Boo York, and I hope this episode has helped to clear away the cobwebs from your inspiration and given you the power to write the stories you want to read. Now, it's time for us to get some writing done. Talk to y'all soon.